Hello and welcome back to the Collegiate Call of Duty League. We are in the play-ins and we have got ourselves a qualifier match on hand. I'm Alan I hold shift out of Frio with Pokemon Panda coming at you from outer space apparently today. Although I was trying to find a little picture shouting back to my alma mater, but we'll just stay in space for the moment. But Panda, we've got ourselves again a really good one cooking up for us here as we just saw Butler able to take down Rutgers. We'll go over and switch to Liberty Navy taking on Cincinnati, a Northeastern team playing up against a team from the Midwest. This is, again, a qualifier match. You win, you're in the playoffs. Big implications, obviously, on the line. Yeah, and when the stakes are laid down on the grill like that, you know that the uh, player morale has got to be a little head buddy, you know what I'm saying? I mean, this is a very emotional, driven match at that, too, so you don't want that to get in the way of hitting your shots, letting your strategies at least go to waste. We want to see these two teams fire off on all cylinders the best as possible so that way they can solidify themselves as a playoff team. I'm going to need you to stop talking about steaks on grills. It's just to get to the point. I don't know what's going on up there in, in Washington, D.C. area, but down here, it's 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 grill-out weather down here. It's cook-out weather. I'm ready for say, some It's grill steak. weather all the time. I don't care at the time of year. You know what? You're not wrong. <laughs> but again, game one, as we, of course, know, hard point will start things off, and we will be seeing a triple dose of gridlock, a little buffet line of which modes will be played there, as we'll see a sampler of all three. Although, again, as we get... To Closer to cookout weather, I'm thinking like samplers of certain types of beverages. But here we'll just do the samplers of gridlock playing hard point search and destroy and control. We'll go to Arsenal for map four if we get there, and then we'll finish things off if there is a map five to Hacienda for the search and destroy. And for gridlock, this is a map that Liberty Navy, I, I know we got a chance to cast these guys before. They very much so enjoy this map, so they will get a chance to kind of warm things up. For Cincinnati, I remember watching back and watching this squad play on gridlock, specifically on the search and destroy not too long ago. And they looked a little bit lost at certain points in time. So it'll be interesting to see what adaptations they've made since the regular season has concluded. And in that last match that we saw from LU Navy, we saw them persevere through uh, against all odds. I mean, the way that this team ends up playing, uh, fully grouping and resetting themselves, the stabilization that they showcase is just well composed team play. And you're not wrong. They like gridlock, man. I, the, the lowest KD that they actually have on this map is 1.79, and that's flash. So I, <laughs> that's not necessarily bad by any means. No, no, not bad at all. And it will be Liberty Navy winning off good. the rip here, too, for the 50-50 hill. They're starting to accrue their first capture percentage. Already up to 15 seconds. The second hit is coming in, though. So since they find some contest, but oh, cook it bad because he's in such a good, powerful spot, and no one's really able to peel him off, although he does lose his support from behind. So Cincinnati will be able to win things out, but careful, Vinny has put himself in quite a compromising position. He's worked himself along the back. You can see him kind of maneuvering and trying to swing these uh, hard point spawns in favor for the second point for LU Navy. And Cincinnati a little bit lost on what they want to do. They will meet that 14 seconds and surpass it, but they still have to struggle to get back to the second point. Panda, did we lose you? No, but I lost visuals, so we're going to have to oh. be you for a little bit there, bud. Feels bad, man. Okay, well, we'll just keep really going for like the time that. being. It really do be like that, for sure. It is 26 to 18, though, for Liberty Navy, as they are, again, just holding on to this point. They lost the spawns, though, so for L uh, UC, they're able to find their way into the back and make their way through for the break, which they will do successfully. Liberty, still with a little bit over 30 seconds, has a chance to recontest this. They aren't really committing for a full frontal flood, though, so... We'll be trying to move on towards the flank, but they have to be careful because if this gets pushed back, Cincinnati can rotate in for free. King Ray doing what he can as today to dive into the sushi. He will find one now turning around, just searching for the next opponent. But little does he know that those opponents are not quite there as LU Navy has given up this second hard point and they will be moving on into that tree hard hill. And well, it's looking solid for Cincinnati with uh, nearly a 30 point lead already. Yeah, and, and you're basically seeing the entire team of Navy just trying to get as many respawns as possible, trying to attack this hard point. They kind of struggle with this, too. We've seen in the past, uh, just they got a lot of solo pop-offs, but the way that they attack hard points, it's very stagnant. You, you need to basically go in here and try to focus fire as much as possible. Getting in here, getting these trades is not going to be favorable, all things considered. It's 40 seconds left on the control. Indeed, and now with Liberty Navy able to piece back together just only 10 points down all of a sudden. 
able to hold things on nicely. And it just comes down to, can you see break on in? Here comes the push. Nicely found for Vinny to find himself too. King were able to trade back one though, but again, numbers are here for Liberty and more importantly, Vinny is on six straight and he's got himself his first set of streaks. Only 15 seconds off will be contested. So King Ray will eliminate the possibility of the Hellstorm also being earned. But Liberty Navy have found themselves a little bit of a lead. Cincinnati with the scrap time will surpass that. Just comes down to how can they approach this rotation into the broken house. Yeah, and you can see uh, top part of your screen, King Ray getting a lot of good value just on controlling the hard point alone. It is getting very close to that Tempest. It's going to come in very clutch, especially around the 100 point mark uh, as the rotation for the hard point comes through. And this is it. This is going to be a little bit more of a difficult hard point just to attack. It's from spawns alone as you end up walking your way through this cafe area. These pinches and these chokes are not exactly easy when you're finding a <laughs> lot of enemies with uh, all their ICRs and Maddox looking down range, just like Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's <laughs> such, such a tough situation to break through that. Uh, again, one of the more difficult hard points, I would say, to break in the game due to, again, like you mentioned, the nature of the choke points. Although Vinny will come back through and find himself two more. He's 13 and six on another little spree here as he's got three in a row. He might start to get close to considering, do you just put this lightning strike down early? Because he very well could lap in those streaks as there is still 10 seconds of capture left. King Ray going to challenge the window, though. Wow. He'll be able to help out, and that's a very bold call. Yasmino also able to take down one by the armored truck. Up and over goes King Ray. The hip fire good enough while mantling at Cincinnati. They'll win this rotation fight. It just comes down to, have you put Vinny in a spot where he has to use this lightning strike to break? It looks like maybe not as Liberty Navy will win the outside rotations, giving themselves numbers on the surround as well. So as we look at Fred the Shed, the new name here for Liberty Navy, able to come through with his ICR. He will get some contest time, but needs the assistance badly as Cincinnati has not gone away yet, and he will be taken down. The respawn's not quite here for LU Navy, so Cincinnati will once again put themselves in control of the hill. Yeah, and... That one kill in the window is just pivotal. It, it, that was Liberty Navy just trying to get their footing underneath the ground, and now you just see the control of the spawns. There's a lightning strike that you were talking about, Shift, and that's actually going to help out Liberty Navy get control of this hard point. 15 more seconds until it rotates all the way through. So for Cincinnati, you're more than happy to just hold on to as many streaks as possible. Uh, you take a look at King Ray just putting in a chronic amount of work is going to have the Tempest for this next engagement. And now we're getting close to the specialists as well. Just comes down to, do you use these? And when do you use these? And that's the biggest question. You talk about the chronic pressure. Well, it's enough to make Dr. Dre a little bit jealous. I'm sure as the Tempest is kind of an able to take down one with the kill from the Tempest. So all of a sudden, Liberty Navy with a chance to string together two kills in a row. That would be great in the comeback effort. Unshocked also will be shot, but it's actually a response from what I believe was actually a team charge to be able to put down was Vinny as he found himself a teammate with that Tempest. And now all of a sudden it will be King Ray pulling the trigger. He's got himself the pack five boost with the 200 extra HP, able to take down Vinny trying to turn for the 180, cooking bad kids. He's able to cook him up nicely. And Liberty Navy will hold on to at least contest for now. Grab slam coming in, cooking bad kids will find two. Very nice. And that'll clear open the point. And now Liberty Navy with a significant lead with still 15 seconds to cap. Yeah, that definitely answers your question. You definitely want to invest those specialists as quick as possible just to gain momentum and have control over this entire map and spawns too. Cannot stress it enough, uh, the way that Gridlock just plays out, all these choke points and everything, as long as you control your spawns and you try to stay as grouped as possible, preparing yourself for the next hard point is how you're going to find success in this map. Liberty Navy pulling themselves well ahead here as Cincinnati has control of the hard point moving their way in here and just getting staggered again Liberty Navy getting trapped as they're trying to attack the hard point Cooking Bad gets 35 off full streaks. Will he actually hit the lightning strike? This is a bold call to put it down in. He's actually going to push forward and, ch and charge into the dojo. And he finds two. And now all of a sudden, I kill KDs with the War Machine. That'll be enough to open up this point completely as it's a full team wipe. And now I kill KDs. Can he lock down this little cubby door? Cooking Bad gets just watching his backside. He's going to get the information that there is a pretty big flood coming through. I kill KDs will find one. How about one more? There it is. Dirty. No Black Jacket. Again, with the specialist change when it comes to just... A mounting to just a score you have to be paying attention to that number that your war machine player is before you put on flag deck and cincinnati completely caught off guard and lu navy starting to take a significant lead up now 50. yep uh, cincinnati you're doing a good job at least controlling their own spawns and trying to get as many good rotations as possible but when you're walking into i kill katie's uh war machine like that too you mentioned it shift uh getting a lot of good value too 17 and 12 23 and 12 cooking bad kids too look at how close to getting to another grab slam uh, where Unshocked, I believe, is still working towards their first one at 10 and 15. 
Yeah, this is absolutely rough. P. Holdy does have a war machine, though, unshocked, also with the grab slam. So you take a look at the specialist economy. It's starting to swing in favor of Cincinnati, and they desperately need to try to pull the trigger on some of these in order to amount this little bit of a comeback. They do get broken, though, for this next hill. Liberty Navy looking to secure the scrap time on shot. Does he contest here? Looks like he wants to. Finny able to only find one, and UC will break back in. That's very valuable time. Still a writer underneath 20 seconds. It would have put Liberty Navy within win condition for this next hill. They were just short of it, though, and now Cincinnati in fighting condition. Uh, Trace is going to end up getting caught out here. Oh, no, never mind. Trace is going to come back for a two-piece. That is actually amazing right there as the hard point ends up rotating through. Mm. Uh, the spawns are definitely in the favor. Killstreaks are being invested here to shift, and I'm not too sure about that one. Actually, no. Cooking back hits, keeping momentum in the favor. That's pretty good. The Liberty Navy reaching that 200-point mark. They are getting full control of the spawns. P. Hildy to pull out the War Machine was immediately shut down. The Hellstorm to follow up. Liberty may be able to stay out of line of sight. King Ray, you have to be heroic at this point. You need to do what you can to hold this off. Wait for your teammates to come on in. The respawns are here, and this is being contested. Mark able to help out. We haven't called his name much this game. He is 20 and 17, does have a vision pulse ready to go whenever he decides he wants to pop it. But Liberty Navy again with the break. Still 23 seconds here, and here's the bad situation. This is the third time we've seen this rotation come in, and Cincinnati is nowhere near ready to contest off the rip. They're going to have to make this flood successful on the first hit. Yeah, Unshocked finally has that grab slam too. We waited a, quite a bit of time to see this grab slam. It needs to be clutch. You talked about heroic moments and we are getting Whoa. that just now. Fantastic work with the SOG as everybody from Liberty Navy just staggers into the little doorway. Still holding onto the grab slam. Can actually pull in that heroic moment that we're talking about as Cincinnati are really not that far behind. Oh, I kill KD's though coming out of soon. She gets both players that were holding for Cincinnati completely unawares and he's able to find two. So that's going to open up an opportunity for Liberty Navy to come back in. Yasmino fighting back, just contesting for as long as humanly possible. The last player left is in Sushi, playing out their lives on Shock, does commit to using the grab slam. Unfortunately, he finds a teammate, so it's yeah. an even trade, and Liberty Navy is on the flank, but Cincinnati doing a good job of holding. Still 30 seconds here, and we're going to be tied up at 214 apiece. Yeah, if you're Liberty Navy at this point, too, I, you just got to try to, again, control the map regroup as best as possible there's only a matter of seconds left inside this so I mean, you might get a few more points over into your uh your bank but i think you need to be set up for the final the final go and just set up for the win here as you see liberty navy just absolutely working their way through these smaller areas these trades are definitely going to play in the favor for liberty navy as they get the response coming through and the new hard point rotating down towards the spa and dojo area king ray and unshock though they're Putting in work along with a uh, just in the vanilla gunplay alone. Oh no, spoke too soon. Liberty Navy though has the specialists again. You see, Cooking Badkins has charged up another grab slam. Vinny right there with a the tempest. I kill kid is with the war machine. Wind conditions absolutely here as they do have control of the hill. This is where you're gonna start to see them zoning things out. The war machine comes out for the second time. Cincinnati completely unaware of what the oh. charge was, and they will take the victory. But it was close and. You know, I, I hesitated saying it while it happened live, but it's worth meriting and mentioning here. That was essentially a 4v5 for Liberty Navy. Shrey's did nearly nothing for the first about 60% of that map. He finally got, as you mentioned, that little two-piece, which got things going for him, but it was a severely slow start for him. So for the side of Liberty Navy, you have to be feeling pretty lucky and thankful that you're able to find some big moments from players like I Kill KDs as well as Cook and Bad Kids as they were clutched throughout a number of moments in this match. Yeah, especially uh, I Kill Katie's. I mean, you said it at the end there. I mean, second war machine coming through. That's fantastic within its own right, sure. But if you take a look at the other hand and why they might even feel that luck that much further, Unshocked only got one grab slam through the entirety of it, and it traded out. It ended up finding a teammate and uh, another one, too. You take a look at some of these stats here. Uh, yeah, I think you're, you're right to say for cooking bad kids and I Kill Katie's, putting in a decent amount of work there, finding a... Uh... A lot of good footing in that map, uh, really forcing a lot of unwarranted rotations out yeah. from uh, Cincinnati. And, and it really caught them off guard, too. I mean, you take a look at the effectiveness from everything. Again, uh, I don't want to harp too much on Unshocked, but you definitely need a little bit more out of your players. Uh, expect, I mean, you, you said it for Shrays, too. But when you have everybody else from Liberty Navy just at least statically popping off like that too. I mean, here's Fred again, that stand-in that we're talking about is still up there at 4,000 damage, better than Shrey's, but everybody from Cincinnati just not putting in quite enough work to keep up the pace with I Kill KDs and Cooking Bad Kids. Indeed, and I wonder if there was a name change somewhere in here because the PSNs did open up for people to change names, but 
Um, I, I need to get some clarification, I suppose, maybe from one of the admins or maybe someone in chat. But sure. uh, Fred the Shed and, and Shrey is both players that, uh, at least as I'm looking at our stat sheet, we do not have information on them. So I don't know if these are new players or if it's... Um, Okay, so Fred the Shed is Sneaky Ninja. Thank you, Jay Pros, for the information. But question marks on Shrey's, I guess, would be my next follow-up as far as, you know, is that Flash, uh, I guess, would be my question. You know, Lots of questions. I, lo lots of question marks. And, uh, <laughs> maybe it's just us not putting in the research to find out exactly who changed their name and, and where. But regardless, uh, it, it is interesting to kind of maybe potentially have, again, this roster has changed up a little bit. DK Brewer, again, not with the greatest internet situation. He's been severely missed by this team for quite some time in the back half of the season, uh, but still they're able to come back together. Vinny Snap was kind of that mid-season addition to the squad. Cook and Badkins and I Kill KDs have been the three major uh, players, I would say, for this LU Navy squad. Uh, and Cincinnati just a touch short with, again, that consistent roster that we expected from the Midwest. Uh, it, just not quite able to get things fully going. The differential, that 50 points, 60 points that they had at a couple different moments uh, throughout that map, just too much to overcome for them this time around, looking to bounce back again, staying on gridlock, but for the search and destroy net. Yep. And just to echo what you said, going back to gridlock again and again and again. And the thing <laughs> about Cincinnati, it's not exactly their best map. It's actually one of their worst statistically uh, mm -hmm. from KD across uh, from damage per map. It, it's just not that consistent uh, all the way through, uh, at least not as much as, as Navy, you know, and, and that's the, it clearly got shown. Uh, even in the middle of all of those firefights too, just the the trade-offs heavily in the favor for LE Navy. And you can tell their understanding from the rotations and which chokes to honestly hold was really, really good. I think I only saw just a few slip-ups as far as engagements are concerned. I started highlighting it a little bit uh, in the middle of um, a little a little of the round. You know, Cincinnati had a little bit of a lead and we saw LU Navy fall into their old habits where they started just... just staggering into the little doorways and getting absolutely obliterated because of it but then they pulled themselves back uh, i kill kds and cooking bad kids just putting in a massive amount of work with uh, their maddox and their sogs and and able to get those uh those specialists very quickly it, that's exactly what you need as long as you have at least one or two players uh picking up the slack from where two are not that's where you're seeing lu navy really pull ahead uh where cincinnati doesn't have a, any sort of pop-off coming through yeah. there too i i I can't. I cannot stress it again. Like I don't want to harp on you too much on shock, but I, I we got to see more out of that too. I mean, the way that the grab slam can turn in a matter of a fight, it, it's very important. Uh, whether you find value in your specialist for the grab slam, tempest, or for your war machine, we need to see more out of Cincinnati. Indeed, we do, and we are getting the confirmation that Shrey's is in fact Flash. So it was just name changes, of course, right before playoffs. That's the way it sometimes goes. Everyone decides they want to change their name as PSNs opened up. So. Um, so that, it is the same gotta roster. Keep us on again. Our toes. <laughs> gotta keep us on our toes. Keep us guessing. Just make yeah. us second guess ourselves at every moment as we will have a lobby restart very quickly. Um, but again, for the search and destroy, a very different style of game mode. Again, we kind of hit it a lot throughout the last couple of weeks since the patch change with specialists only charging now with score, no longer charging due to time. So we very rarely will actually see those specialists be utilized in search and destroy unless somebody is popping up. But more importantly, there's the introduction of zero and that disruptor nade, which is essentially free scouting with a grenade considering the AOE and the fact that it also can hit people through walls. Yeah, that's actually insane too uh just learn <laughs> the, the only silence inside the game but you give away your positioning it, it's kind of a high risk high reward kind of if you can collapse on a target uh like what we've seen from lu navy it would probably be the team to pull it out uh would be really nice to see too i mean a little bit of parody in between compositions isn't exactly a bad thing in my opinion uh but you know i'm trying i'm trying to pull up a, a few of these stats too we don't have anything specifically for search and destroy on gridlock for lu navy but i guess we can push it that much further and why we haven't seen much from shrey is uh you know the lowest kd on the team at 1.79 on gridlock which again isn't necessarily bad but uh you look at the rest of the players just cleaning up the rest of the work around and, and being able to buffer out those edges uh throughout it all um you almost got to think too if if you're Cincinnati shift, would you would you end up trying to pull out like the pull out the different EMP strat, or would you end up trying to just try to bulldoze your way through what you already know? 
I mean, it, I think it just comes down to the practicality of can you get that fifth specialist online or give yourself a higher chance? And I think beyond that, maximize least, efficiency. Exactly. Maximize efficiency. We've been talking about that way too often in the last couple of weeks, me and you. But <laughs> I, I think beyond that, you're seeing a couple of switch ups as far as what the offhand equipment is for a lot of players and a lot of teams as we will draw out once again for a lobby restart. Third time will surely be the charm. I, I almost guarantee it. But Going back to the equipment side of things, we've seen a couple of very cheeky strategies as a lot of people would just come into battle with concussions. Maybe one player would be able to use a frag grenade. We've seen in the recent past, some teams have come out with everybody on frag grenades and nobody on concussions. And the tech mask doesn't really affect or get affected by uh, the, the disruptor grenade all that much. So uh, again, I think it's just the ability to utilize it for a, a free information, but B also when it comes to score generation, because again, how wide the AOE is, you're able to get that information, plus also help bolster your score in a game mode now where it's very, very rare that you find specialist weaponry being fully utilized or even charged for that matter at all. So exactly. I would say just a lot of people are still trying to figure out the pacing change and what is the best combination because let's be honest, you're probably not going to find, I mean, how often do we see 2,500 plus score for a recon to get the vision pulse? The answer is very, very rarely, and you have to absolutely pop off if that's going to be as something that you actually get charged all the way through. So uh, I, I just don't see the recon being utilized all that well because you can't use things like the vision dart anymore. So uh, there's a lot of considerations as far as what is your best bet and what is the most amount of utility you can get out of your setup. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot more zero and um, no fire break and no recon involved. So it's just, uh, again, just playing to whatever strengths the game gives you. It only gives you like essentially one option um, at, at that point just because of what is allowed and not allowed to be used. Yeah, just to, uh, you know, echo that even that much further, you and I were chattering uh, during the last game that was on stream here, and the one thing that you'll never see out of Search and Destroy, like what we just saw out of Hardpoint, is uh, fast specialists because of the, just the nature of the game mode in general, and that's why you're going to see a lot of those, uh, a lot of those parodies as far as uh, compositions are concerned. Yeah. Uh, a, lo a lot of different specialists being in a different, in a different manner, but you know, it, it comes down to a lot of different aspects, too. I, I guess you could even... Put the uh, put your hand in the hat and pull out what you're most comfortable with at the same time. Uh, it really plays into these effects. Uh, you know, if you're not sure if you're going to find value in one, then you might as well just stick to what you know. But Fred the Shed, however, he's going to go ahead and throw up that parody. And, and it's like I said, if there's going to be a team that does it in this matchup, it was going to be Liberty Navy. And Mark actually will stick on the recon, so... Interesting. Interesting to see the loadout as we go through. You see with a free plant here at B, nobody from LU Navy even contesting. I killed KDs. We'll get some information that there is one player sitting near the white truck. Bong will also go down. So now it comes down to the mad dash and the rotation. Big moments coming here on the big flank from Vinny and Cook and Bad Kids. They need to win out this fight because this is such a strong position defensively now for Cincinnati to watch over the bomb. One player will dive into boxes. Vinny playing from 18. They're going to get contested on the bus stop and Unshock able to take down one. Yasmino able to help out as well. Cincinnati starting off things strong. Four on one situation for Shrey's. He's probably going to look for an exit off the map to make sure this bomb doesn't go off for free, you would imagine, but he doesn't really have anywhere to go. So it looks like he will just hold up to his life. Yeah, you can't climb that, Shrey's. <laughs> Let me out. <laughs> Let me out. Desperately searching for a way over. You, you can't can even it, climb friend. a sign. I believe. You can do it. <laughs> Try harder. Yeah. Uh, they're out there searching for him, too. They they want that uh, kill. It's actually really important, too, that, that you don't give up any more uh, kills or uh, get get them closer to the streaks, too. Uh, Liberty Navy just not doing a good job of setting themselves up for success. Just uh, only I kill KDs just taking a look and taking a peek in a gander at B and everybody on the rotation from Liberty Navy just getting really caught out. And it, it was just really good setup all all you know, from Cincinnati. The, the way that they were ending up setting up there, that bomb, uh, especially around the uh, the police depot, they were able to take a multitude of high ground on the uh, the trucks and just the natural terrain too. So really catching Liberty Navy with the pants down is uh, is how they walk away with that round. Very clean, might I add. Never lets me caught with the pants down near a police depot. I'll tell you that much. Not from personal Enough. experience, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> LU Navy you caught off a little bit here as Cincinnati plays a very aggressive defense, pushing right through the tree. Bomb already down. You on one situation and. Well, blink and you'll miss it. Cincinnati with a full surrounded dojo, completely entrapping Liberty Navy. That's a very quick 2-0 for Cincinnati. Something happened in between these games and in between the uh, the round or the lobby getting redone. Time and time it just uh, has to be a regrouping as far as uh, mentality is concerned. So uh, that's why I said it at the beginning of the entire of uh, the entire game. It's um, you, you can't 
stress enough how important it is to keep your mentality together. It, just the way that Cincinnati are playing together like an absolute unit. Uh, they are focus firing targets down. They are playing very well together and catching Liberty Navy just one by one. These are the same problems that I was talking about. They cannot just stagger themselves walking into these choke points. Uh, everybody from Cincinnati is just ready to gun you down. God, I love this patience from Cincinnati. Just a little bit of a hesitation, nice. then a full flood, and nobody's here to scout this again for LU Navy. I kill KDs was the oh, player responsible out. for it, and he's got nowhere to go, and you called it properly. He'll be able to push on through the lower end of the broken building, and all of a sudden, Cincinnati has gotten the bomb down once again at B for free, and they have a number advantage of four on three. Yeah, they lose Hildy. Uh, so now you, you, Liberty Navy just trying to understand how they can attack this. And everybody peeking at the window clean what? yet again. Cincinnati, three rounds in a go. They recycled the same exact style and, and play style. You said it best. They, they sit there. They take a look at what might be open. Nobody's looking down middle. So they understand that probably everybody's stacking at A yet again. I kill KDs being caught out, just taking a peek in a gander at B. Yet, and you don't need, you don't want I kill KDs going down. If there's anyone on this team that is more consistent with their weapon play, it is I kill KDs. You cannot let him go down that quickly. 0 and 3 at the beginning of this. So they only have five kill shift between Shrays and Vinny. This is wow. This is a different game than what we saw in Hardpoint. Absolutely, and a lot more one-sided as well. This is, uh, I would say, Liberty Navy needs to be shaking in their shoes at the moment as they are not finding much success. Again, a little bit of a bait and switch here as I kill KDs will offer himself at least a little bit of presence towards B and then back up to help his team, but it looks like he will just corral up everybody sitting near the middle of the map and say, all right, let's go B. Mark is the player here responsible for holding. He's got the ICR at a very nice angle. We'll see information on one. It's just a shoulder peek. There's a second and... Well, that was looking for a cluster nade, and Mark says, not today, my friend, as he's able to find one, and now he's got an opportunity to essentially stay here simply because he's going to have the support coming from behind, and there's only two players from LU Navy even pushed forward. I just don't know why you challenge that if you're cooking bad kids. I already just staring down with the ICR. You are just flirting with disaster. You can't get the grenade <laughs> in the window as quick as possible. You're just absolutely going to get obliterated. And he, rotation coming through from Mark again, just trying to put in the clutch. Wow. Actually gets a lightning strike, gets the second... A uh, one-on-two situation here. If King Ray can clutch this out, that would be quite insane. I, I kill KDs hasn't exactly had a fantastic game so far. There's one King Ray. He might be able to do this. He actually gets the defuse going. Fantastic play. Good rotation from King Ray. And full streaks. King wow. Ray able to earn. Mark able to earn. You called it flirting with Mark. He swiped left on all that action, finding himself <laughs> three. <laughs> Cincinnati are already up for nothing. This is looking like the most one-sided affair we've seen between these two teams. You say sh you said that they might be shaking in their boots. I think they're just straight up shook at this point, Ship. They are having no answers. They are not they are they're just they're, they're they're like actually just walking into the sight lines just getting pre-fired every time I mean, they have multiple members of cincinnati already aiming down sights of one area they are welcome to challenge it you can walk into a gunfight with as much grit as possible but if you're not going to hit those shots and you're going to run to this exact situation where you're going to have streaks across the board and this is going to be devastating already 4-0 up and cincinnati might just walk away with this uh, honestly, they could win this entire map just off the score streaks alone on offense if they even, you know, have some unsuccessful defensive rounds or want to try something cheeky just simply because of the pressure and the ability for them to stall out for so long. Hmm. LU Navy, understanding that it's been a very much so B-sided map for the Cincinnati approach. And one kill happens over the middle. Look at this free real estate. Somebody call Century 21 because they're giving away all this land for free. And bomb site at A is going to be 100% compromised here as Cincinnati will be able to get the bomb down. And they've got nice little crossfire setups already. Yeah, it was a good lockdown there from the lightning strike. And just trying to catch multiple members out in the open. Fred coming through in the back is actually going to get a two-piece. He's going to set up Liberty Navy to at least get a opening here. A 2v1 situation now. Cincinnati still having the man advantage. And with the bomb down, he cooking bad kids is gonna have to come in clutch here. You see him just trying to figure out, poking, prodding, trying to find out any sort of opening. He's gonna get gunned down from behind. Mark coming in clean with the headshot. Tough situation for Cook and Bad Kids. Uh, he gets the information, obviously, that there's a player sitting by tree. I actually would have liked to have seen him just push straight through showers and try he to should've. catch them unaware because, because again, the line of sight wasn't there. But not going to make a difference. Here's that play from Fred, like you mentioned. Nice little turn on to Hildy, who could not quite lock down the shots needed. But 
again, Cincinnati has rounds to play with, a lot of them, in fact, as they are up now 5-0, and King Ray on seven straight has yet to die, still holding on to double streaks, and he's getting close to his Tempest. That would be in, well, I would say record fashion, considering the changes that have been occurring with that specialist weaponry charge. Information from King Ray, and look at this, a smart little backup. Make sure you hit your streaks or give you an opportunity to utilize them. Don't die here, you can win it with a 6-0. A trade one for one, now he'll be able to get himself involved. The four on three breaks down, but more importantly, the bomb has been left near the showers, and I think Yasmado has some idea that it's here. He will push forward and catch just the last shot needed for Shrey's three on one situation, cooking bad kids. This is nearly an impossible situation for him to pull out. Yeah, I respect the decision coming out from Liberty Navy, just side. Uh... <laughs> Getting about the bomb, just going straight for the frags at this point. And now, looking bad kids just camping in this corner is actually going to find ooh, one. Ooh. Can he get the oh. second? He cannot. P. Hildy coming in clutch. Eh? Liberty Navy, they have to be aware that if they're not shutting down Ray anytime soon, that Tempest is basically complete. And it, not under and fully understanding about the changes to how specialist works is being played out to a tenth degree from Cincinnati right now. They have momentum. Uh, they have control and tempo of the map, and they will have the Tempest for this round. Well, that will not happen as they find the 6-0. So oh, it, 6 it was sorry. close. Yeah, well, it they was were about close. to have it. Sorry. We were, we I, I were was getting so excited. Caught I wanted up. to see I know. it. <laughs> I was saying we're getting ah. so caught up in the fact that we're going to see our first specialist come yeah. to fruition. Uh, we won't get the rounds to do it. Maybe if it was first to 7 or 8, but no, not today. So it will give still me, be it. That's a 12. It was so decisive, though, that, again, look, just look at the, the the showmanship here from both Mark and King Ray and Hildy. Uh, Yasmin, I was sitting here like, guys, like, let me do something. He still finds himself a part of four different kills, but only 281 damage because he just yep. didn't need to do it as he was the one player really holding on to that middle area. And no one ever came that direction. So, uh, I kill KDs. Yeah. Not good. That's not that. That is not the... Uh... That is not exactly what you want, especially coming through Hardpoint. And I, and I guess it's kind of the unfolding of why Hardpoint was uh, very close. I mean, even though statistically, Liberty Navy have better KDs across the board, too. Just the macro play that was coming out from Cincinnati, you can definitely heavily outweigh any mechanical, any micro whatsoever, just from understanding the map. And I... I want, I, I'm going to go back and watch that VOD 10 times over too. Just the absolute swarm when they had the bomb in their hands, realizing that their rotation was just very open. And that's just, that's just some high level, high level Call of Duty that you, you just love to see here out of these, uh, out of the CCL uh, qualifiers, man. Yeah, Cincinnati just looked absolutely prepared for this map. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, the, it wasn't just the fact that they were out slaying, it was the fact that their setups just looked that much better. Liberty Navy looking a little bit lost. I wonder what the vetoes were for the search and destroy, but regardless, we will just move on and keep ourselves here on gridlock. One more time, we'll stay in the Japanese locale, but we'll be moving to the control game type. Uh, a very dicey situation. I, I actually really enjoy gridlock control because even though obviously there is some defensive favor, it's not nearly as defensively favored as other sites, other maps rather, like Arsenal or Seaside when it comes down to um, that capture point at A. And actually, both those maps is very defensively sided, but here, uh, for gridlock, it's a little bit more open. B is a little bit tougher than A, typically speaking. But again, the respawns are not exactly what you would call on top of the control point for the defense. So a lot of opportunity to for the offense to not have to essentially full wipe once with numbers. Um, they can essentially just play the trade game. And if you come up on top, you can still end up finding success at B. So it's going to be interesting to see what comes to life here uh, with control uh, again on the docket as we are... Uh, I would say I have a little bit of a paradox at hand here since Liberty Navy, uh, I would say I wouldn't just barely squeaked out the hard point, but they survived through the hard point. And Cincinnati with the haymaker on search and destroy, they absolutely trounced on LU Navy as we'll get our third and final map set here uh, on control for gridlock before we go to a different locale. And it's uh, if you, if you waver for all those trades too, Liberty Navy were able to get a little bit more work done when the trades were in the favor. If you go back to hard point, but I, I cannot, I loved, again, every time that Cincinnati had the bomb, their play of terrain alone, if they can bring that into control, mm. if we're going to continuously see a different game. Hardpoint was extremely close. Uh, obviously, Search and Destroy was not even close uh, at a 6-0 <laughs> for Cincinnati. And th this is just a, a different a different style. It could just be, they might be allergic to Hardpoint. Who knows? But it could also be a warm-up phase. But the way that they were playing just the terrain alone, just understanding and rotating high ground, setting up every one of their uh, their ARs for success, uh, especially for Mark, uh, that that was just 
again, high level play. And I want to see more of that coming into uh, to control if they can control uh, not only the point alone, but, you know, the uh, the spawns and, and continuously just catch everybody with their pants down again from Liberty Navy. That's not what you want to be. That's not what you want to be. Never do you want to be pantsless in a game of Call of Duty. But like you mentioned, control coming up next. I, I mean, it's interesting because the play in bracket so far, with the exception of our last set with Butlers versus Rutgers, has been extremely one sided. Uh, yeah. A lot of 3 0s occurring. And as we get into these qualifier matchups, again, the utmost importance is now we're seeing that skill gap kind of be uh, diminished between these teams. And that's going to be echoed even further as we get into the playoffs tomorrow. So. Uh, again, just a lot to prove, but even still, there are a lot of teams that are waiting in the playoff bracket that um, are probably looking at this, saying, "All right, well, winner of this game, we get the you know we get to play the first day." And we're learning a lot about not only Liberty Navy and what they were able to survive with at hard point, but more specifically, what Cincinnati were able to do in search and destroy. So um, I, I'm not 100 percent sure who that would be that would be playing into them. I need to double check on my uh, bracket. Uh, but regardless, it, it's one of those situations that you're getting so much information as a playoff team. Yeah. And a, as one of these play-in squads, you need to make sure that you're, uh, again, staying on top of yourself when it comes down to um, being able to obviously execute properly, but making sure that you're also staying up in the gun scale because it only gets harder from here, even as the set progresses. And you're able to understand, especially off of those tapes and watching the games here too live, that you can see the openings that both these teams are presenting themselves. I mean, again, we cannot write off either of these teams as at a one-to-one -one ratio where we are in the series currently shift, but, you know, they're, they're exposing themselves quite often. There, there are many, many holes in all of the armor uh, for both these teams. In fact, I would probably say a little bit more uh, coming out for, for LU Navy, especially just getting a hard pub stomped on uh, Search and Destroy. But, you know, it's... Uh, it all comes down to, again, what worked out for them on Hardpoint, right? There was a lot of trust in Cook and Bad Kids and I Kill KDs to work out these rotations, too. Even the last match that we saw with uh, Cook and Bad Kids and LU Navy, that they were able to do a fantastic job at just lay or just letting cook and bad kids go on these flanks uh finding a lot of crazy rotations uh this time it was uh it was fred in that last one but it's this is where this team finds success and they need to at least uh properly communicate to each other and and lock down a choke point so that way these flanks can come through uh whether that is with the uh Whatever gun it need be, they need to set themselves up for success just by doing that alone. Because uh, let, letting King Ray get away with that much work and getting that <laughs> fast of a streak, it's going to come into play a lot more here on control. Oh, and look at this. Cincinnati actually guess incorrectly as they send all five players to A. All five players for LU Navy are here at B. And do you even contest this? I don't think you can. Now that King Ray goes out on shot, but we'll give it a go. He will contest time for a little bit and finds one kill and is able to escape. More importantly, Liberty Navy, how do you let them break through like that? You have to know where it's coming from. You've got a player watching the flank. Yes, they do find two ticks of progress, but... They're down in the life count, and Cincinnati, they are very wise to what's happening here as they are here with at least two players. Now three actually try to hold off percentage at A. That's exactly what you would expect after two ticks of progress come through for LU Navy. Unshocked, still trying to do what he can to work up this defense, but it looks like Liberty Navy will find some early success, and Cincinnati will try to set up a surround for the exit kills, potentially, as there is a lot of progress already occurring here for LU Navy. They clean everything up, and they will actually find likely at least two ticks if not a full capture if you're Cincinnati you need to make a decision where do you contest because Vinny is actually moving over to B he's got support with Cook and Bad Kids this is disaster for Cincinnati oh he is just can't he wants this rotation to come through from Cincinnati he hears it he goes in P Hildy however firing off down there at A finally they finally contest the control point but oh. it's uh, it's getting pretty close they're able to actually to thwart off the pressure at B, so that zone will actually be depleted as well. Hildy doing a nice job staying alive for a short time before Cooking Bad Kids cleans them up. And now it looks like Cincinnati has made their call that they will chalk A, not forfeit any more lives. Really good kind of back and forth gameplay here from the offense of Liberty Navy and a tall task just underneath two minutes and only one tick of progress to hold off for Cincinnati LU in a really solid spot here. Yeah, they are doing a fantastic job at that. Uh, highlighting yet again about the specialist cooking bad kids is cooking up his specialist about halfway through there already doing a fantastic job. Liberty Navy again with their rotations. Uh, just in that control on uh, A alone, uh, just holding down oh, one area oh. and shutting down every rotation. Now it's Cincinnati's turn. They are playing the terrain. They are locking down every single entryway and just rotating every 
by any sort of means. Uh, one communication comes through, uh, and then you see the entire team just like a swarm, just following up on that one choke point area. Yes, you need to be careful in this area. Oh it actually my comes in a clutch. That's goodness. Huge. This is such a throwaway from LU Navy. They had two players on the flank just previously. We saw P. Hildy clean up both. That was the vulnerability that LU Navy wanted to try to expose, speaking of from before, trying to get themselves involved on the flank. And then Yaz able to find two for his life as well. Absolutely crucial. Uh, Yaz coming back in for another. He's having himself a solid start to this control. Eight and five already, a 13 on four. What went wrong here for LU Navy? How do you throw away such a huge decisive lead <laughs> Excuse me, I'm choking almost as hard as LU Navy is at the moment with this offense as they will start to keep together a couple of kills. They only need to find one wipe and they could potentially still secure this round, but again, they have stacked the odds drastically against them themselves. Yeah, they're finding them, so you even highlighted it too in the middle of a play. They, they have each other, they have each other's backs in these locations. Even right there, just camping the 40, you heard him sliding through, but P. Hildy still gets the kill. You, you can't let that happen. If, if you're holding off on these rotations and you're more or less communicating with your team that they're coming through, you can't allow these things to happen. Again, unshocked from behind. Liberty Navy quite literally dropping the ball here. Cincinnati taking the round emphatically. Uh, I'm very, very lost on that from LA Navy. You've got two minutes, a life lead, and only one tick of progress needed. Why are you not setting up an approach? I mean, they had the flank for a small moment, but no one was watching the back from the flank, considering there was just two players there waiting for the respawn before they could commit to actually executing. Here's this play from Yasmado, just being a nuisance all over the back line of LU Navy. And well, it paid off drastically, as you can see again, how Yaz is able to piece this together and get away with his life. Insane. Um, absolutely insane. I mean, it was like three times it happened on that on that one round. And there is no reason that you should allow that to happen if you're LUAV. No. Take your time. You've got two minutes and only need one tick of progress. And uh, yikes, that's, uh, a, like, like you mentioned, a huge ball dropped for Liberty Navy. Now down one round, Cincinnati. We'll just take the mad dash over towards bombs, or pardon me, capture point A. And Mark able to peel cooking bad kids early. We'll only leave two defenders here. There is a flank developing for Vinny. You have to be careful here for LUAV. Navy. You need to make sure you're staying alive, putting the pressure in, keeping the distraction oh, away. A's already though captured and there's no exit kills. Cincinnati will get away with murder here. Yeah, you see Cincinnati just getting away with everything, too. They hold down showers and spies in Liberty Navy. They have no idea how to even attack there. Uh, Vinny trying to come around on the flank gets caught out very early. And, and here's that swarm mentality that I'm talking about from Cincinnati. It's just like on Search and Destroy. They regroup and they just hold down these areas so well. Uh, they just basically force Liberty Navy to all into these mistakes. There you go. Finally coming in through, getting a couple kills. Uh, it's all about specialists at this point too. I kill KDs needs to needs to pop off your shift. Needs to get this war machine as quick as possible. They need to turn any and all engagements in their favor and quickly. I and mean, uh, again, you can see Cincinnati taking their time to set things up. A very nice start here though for Cook and Bad Kids and Crew as they are able to find two up front. And now P Hildy in a very awkward spot. He does get one kill, but he's going to be getting the information given on him. Cincinnati he needs to stay alive. Whoa, big win for P Hildy. All of a sudden, he's got two players here in support on the flank, and they could actually spawn trap for a little bit here as long as they're able to find the kills from the front. They're not able to. LU Navy able to respond with a nice, solid defense. Really, really well played to hold on to a very tight situation. Cincinnati was right around the corner from being able to hit that flank nicely. And Cincinnati all spawned in the cafe and they all just try to go towards uh, the control point again and just try to swarm on top of it. They're losing these gunfights though, Shift. Cooking Bad Kids is popping off this time around. Uh, even on the flank, got caught out by two. Still came through in a clutch with this team in the back. And I cannot stress it enough. This is huge yeah. for Liberty Navy. They are getting closer and closer to the streaks and getting closer and closer to winning this round. It's very important for them to try to get as many or get as close to their streaks as possible while winning this round to set themselves up further because uh, like we saw in uh, search and destroy a, a certain amount of snowball when it comes down to streaks uh, and specialists it's gonna mean everything a little bait and switch action coming for cincinnati but nice comeback here from i kill kids and cookie bad kids to stay alive another little mini flight here from i kill kill Ds. he will clean everything else up there will be a respawn coming through in Liberty. Uh, a little bit caught up in the middle portion of the map. They will be able to take down Unshock. Look at Bad Kid's able to come back and he doesn't grab something you would hate to have to use it here though. It looked like he almost wanted to for a second, but still a seven life lead. No progress been made here at B yet. Vinny able to take down one with a SOG. Trades happening back and forth. All of that favoring LU Navy. 
finally Cincinnati able to get some capture percentage going, but again, just the life lead. Such a difficult increment to come through, but you still have to be careful if you're early Navy. You cannot give this one away. Kills coming for Cincinnati. They very well could find a second tick of progress. This is absolutely great for Unshot. You talk about needing to charge up your specialists. He's very close to a grab slam, but still a six life differential. Cooking Bad Kids just playing the contest <laughs> game because he knows nobody from Cincinnati can really truly contest that position. Mark Lauren going down. Unshot will be the last one left alive, yeah. and that's only for an abbreviated amount of time. LU Navy with a nice hold here at B. Quite the turnaround from Liberty Navy off of uh, both search and destroy in that first round, and uh, it, it's good patience too uh, from cooking bad kids not to use that grab slam. It would have been a really good play, would have got the two piece, but it's really important again to win this round and to walk into the next round uh, and stagger out your specialist abilities. The war machine should be coming around for them momentarily, along with the grab slam that's already online. Yep, they have both of them ready and available. Uh, not too far behind with the Tempest at that. Uh, where Cincinnati, they will have their own war machine. So walking into this engagement, if they continue with the swarm mentality as everybody's rushing towards the same place, the shower, this is going to get crazy as they just wait for Markland. They don't want to take a full engagement here until he fully wraps around, but if they come down, Wow. Pack 5 was also utilized for this push for Cincinnati, and it comes up with absolutely nothing. LU Navy are surely going to be able to capture A here. They've got a four life lead. Cincinnati are going to try to set up, make sure nobody pushes through. And actually, they're able to find two kills. Do you potentially contest this now? You've got some utility that you can potentially use here. Vinny able to only find one before he gets traded. So all of a sudden, Cincinnati have two players, a two on one. You would love to clean this one up and set yourself up for a defense. And King Ray and Yasmino doing exactly that. You can complete that third tick. Although I don't like that call to get aggressive there, Yasmino. You still have two players of your team sitting and defending at B. So it looks like finally with that little overextension, Hildy will be cleaned up and LU Navy will find success at A. But meanwhile, the other side of the map, Shrey is able to open things up here at B. He's got a teammate here in support. That's Fred. Things are looking good as the first tick of progress is just about to come through at B. It sure will. More kills as well. So now the second tick of progress starts to get accrued up. And now Cincinnati in a tough spot because they have pressure coming over the middle to deal with. And all of a sudden, two ticks of progress already through for LU Navy. Yeah, Shrey's uh, during that entire clown fiesta down in the spas area as Liberty Navy were finalizing the control, uh, actually started working their way towards the, towards the control point B and started Ooh. capturing right there. Fantastic grab slam from Cookie Back Hits. That's why you hold on to it. And they were able to save the tack 5-2 where Shrace finds a lot of value. Uh, just the entire team of Cincinnati wasted theirs. And that is very unfortunate. Going up two to one here and shift. They didn't use everything they have. Wow. Liberty Navy uh, still mean, has it, a lot to work with into this round. Yeah, they absolutely do. And again, just the defense from that last round was extremely successful. I, I'm just, I'm just so happy that LU Navy was able to actually clean up that round because if they were to have lost that one again, and again, you see where to get away with murder, they might need to talk to Shonda Rhimes about getting on the ABC show because goodness, that was the first defense should never have happened. That's but here, Liberty you know, Navy. If you're happy, you know, I'm, I'm sure Liberty Navy's happy too. You, ah, you, have you to can be. see it's, 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 it's getting accentuated in their game too. I mean, 19 to 14, I kill KD is still getting uh, a lot of work done. Everybody from Liberty Navy actually doing a fantastic job of turnaround from that first round. Uh, this time around, though, you can see the difference in plays. Cincinnati are not playing any games anymore. They're taking these hard rotations. They're forcing themselves into these engagements, and they're going to come out on top of this, especially with uh, especially with their their songs. I kill Kadis with the War Machine out. He's looking to possibly push this one back. He's able to find one, nice. looking for a second. The Flak Jacket is in effect, though. He uses all of his cartridges on that push, trying to hold things off, and Cincinnati are still able to win out the trade. So with Yasmin, the last player left here, if he can find this one kill he might just be able to clean things up although cooking bad kids is here in response unshocked commits the grab slam though and does get traded so i don't know if i like the call i would have liked to have seen him save that for a where you get more value out of it typically speaking but regardless mark will open up the point and make sure that third ticket progress does come through cincinnati find capture at b early and with a three life lead yeah, Fred's already down there at A in the shower. He's just already trying to work up that capture, too. I definitely agree with you. Using that grab slam there was a misplay from Unshock. Definitely wanted to hold that one into their pocket. As you can see, everybody from Cincinnati just getting gunned down as they try to rotate through this uh, the wooden spy area. And, oh, again, I kill KD. Fantastic cluster grenade. Actually catches multiple members from Cincinnati during the rotation. And now you can just sit here with your Maddox and just keep pre poke catching members out. This might as well be Liberty Navy's game to lose at this point. They have the Tempest online. So does King Ray, but just working their way into this control point shift, 
Uh, it's, that's not exactly an easy task. Well, uh, they use the Vision Pulse just to hold off and get some map pressure. Mark's still holding on to his there nice entry go. frags from Cincinnati. Able to turn things around very nicely. Still with a lot of offhand equipment to utilize as well just to help delay. But here is that Vision Pulse just to try to secure the round. Mark able to find one. Cooking Bank gets on the flank. He's 100% scouted out. Mark finding three. He's absolutely being monstrous on the side. He does get a, that big kill in Cincinnati. On the back end of the Vision Pulse gameplay, able to open things up, flood the hill, and now all of a sudden we're in round five, and it might just come down to Tempest on Tempest action to potentially open things up for one team or the other. That was amazing, uh, like, like you said, too. I mean, they could have invested the Vision Pulse there. I don't believe that they did, and they still saved Tempest going into this last and final round. Liberty Navy ended up using both their War Machine and the Grav Slam, probably assuming that they were going to walk away with that round clean. Sure, Cooking Bad Kids is halfway to another one. Might see it at the tail end of this round. But yeah, man. Oh, no, they did actually end up using the, uh, the Vision Pulse. Okay, so that's actually massive. Like you said, Tempest on Tempest action. Uh, it all depends, again, who swarms down here in the showers first. Uh, first oh. of all, going over to Cooking Bad Kids, oh. just layering down the damage. This is his <laughs> area. My showers now. And now a beatdown from KD's Liberty Navy just taking the game by the haunches and saying, we will not give you any room to work with. Although, important to note, Mark does have a lightning strike. Not exactly the greatest map when it comes down to just essentially <laughs> sitting here and saying, I can get opening kills with this because of the overpasses that do block that line of sight or from being able to fully convert on it, but it can be good in transition. He has been with a tough situation in front of him. He needs to stay alive and maybe find some kills. He gets taken down on Shocked also falls. Full flood on the flank. Liberty Navy with a big six kill lead. They have a potential for the Tempest, but look what's right around the corner. Cooking bad kids almost to a second grab slam. He is putting in work, and like I said, halfway at the beginning of this round, one quarter away from completing it too. They are swarming in here a six man advantage in their death ratio and i gotta say liberty navy again their game to lose fantastic gunplay there with the SOG just being extremely accurate sure yaz answers right back but these trades are not going to be in your favor you need to win these fights and you need oh, to win them play. quickly and emphatically fantastic stuff from unshocked using the grapple hook and get in there closer and closer shutting down cooking bad kids is definitely where Ooh. you want to be you don't want that grass slam coming around anytime soon mark with no the temp is gonna lock them down now liberty navy swarming point b Trying to dip, dive, duck, dodge, and dodge as Vinny Snap able to find himself one, able to also stay alive. Cooking Bad Kids did get that specialist online. The Graf Slam able to find some lightning strike and Hellstorm utilized, but, or rather the Hellstorm was utilized. I don't think he still got the lightning strike, but again, there's not going to find any value here. You have to come in, win the gun skills out. King Gray with the Tempest, big moment for him, trying to lock things down from wow. range, able to at least down one. Mark Lauren will call on the lightning strike to make sure no extra presence off the respawn comes, and they will hold for now, but still a seven life lead, and everything has been utilized. Now with the Tempest fading away, you're looking at what potentially could come up next. P. Hildy, so close to a war machine, could be big to potentially hold back once again. This is by no stretch over for any team. P. Hildy, big win, needs to come through, able to That's find Cookie Badkins. He was the entry fragger for LU Navy, and now it's only a six life lead, and again, extra pressure for Cincinnati. That is not the cluster name you want! <laughs> Try to get away! Hildy will survive just narrowly, but almost everything going awry. Not exactly a welcoming ramen shop when it comes down to cluster grenades. No. <laughs> uh, actually getting closer and closer, pulls out the, uh, getting closer to that war machine too. Uh, cooking bad kids not finding value with that grab slam is actually going to come back to bite them in the rear too it's 13 to 9 as far as lights are concerned but when these streaks are gonna or i'm sorry these specialists are going to be coming into play here momentarily from cincinnati uh just yaz holding down the fort just making sure the rotations are coming through good patience coming through from liberty navy we are down to 25 seconds and p hildy's going to get this war machine in the final moments of this match actually guns down cooking bad kids and that's there's, massive there's no pressure there's no flank pressure lu has to flood from the front they went out too None of them were on the P. Hildy. He's got the War Machine. Oh, and he finds no. one kill. You've got to hit the trigger, and here it comes. Don't kill your teammates. Oh, he finds two. Oh. Looking for the third and fourth. What? Hildy, are you kidding me? 14 no. seconds left. The respawns are going to have to come, and he's still got charges. Why do you still not have Flag Jacket on, Fred? Five seconds coming in. Hildy with the clutch play. Can Cook and Bad Kids be able to move on in? You see, are going to hold. They were down seven lives in LU. Once again, do not execute anything besides the frontal flood, but the damn wall was strong enough for Cincinnati, holds back the floodgates, and UC will survive on 3-2. What a play from Hildy. Look at this yet again, too. Gets that final kill, pulls out the war machine. 
He has made a living in this ramen shop shift. Oh my god. <laughs> that was insanity. He like literally just oh man, he just played it so dirty too. There's no way that Liberty Navy had any expectation that was coming. It was a good choke out there on the point B. Uh and again, Cincinnati playing that very patient game too. Once they realized that A was lost, they fully reset themselves and just set up shop around the trailer, looking at point B, making sure there was always at least one member holding down the uh, the control point. But, you know, it's uh, just big heads up play again from uh, from Mark Lauren that uh, the lightning strike that did come through, although it only found the one, uh, we were highlighting it a little bit too. On gridlock, it is really hard to find a multiple... Uh, multiple kills with uh, your streaks like that because of all the overpasses. But what it does is it shuts down in rotation. So that way P. Hilde can find even more lockdown with the cluster grenades or the war machine setting themselves up. It always seemed like King Ray, Yaz, Unshocked, uh, or uh, or Hilde always had a a backline shot at, uh, at somebody from Liberty Navy now. And uh, winning the past two maps, it... it that last round was very close, as close as Hardpoint might as well have been. But you know, as we move over to our next map here, Shift, uh, Cincinnati can can walk away with this, man. I am out of words. You talk His about actually on the floor. <laughs> so true, actually, though. But, I mean, you talked about him taking that sushi ramen area to church for him. Someone call Maruchan <laughs> because he is absolutely finding some instant These cup references. of noodles right there. Oh, man, <laughs> what a play. But again, you, you have to be critical of LU Navy. I mean, yes, this is a winner's bracket game. So whoever loses here still has a chance to still qualify by going on to the loser's bracket. But you have to be critical because, uh, again, you have so much time and a life lead to work with. Why do you continue to hit from the front? They're only sending one player on the flank. And Cincinnati, they weren't born yesterday. They're willing to take themselves and kind of abbreviate their defense up front to make sure they don't get flanked. And then as soon as that flank is dead... Then you can research back to the front. It allows P. Hildy in that situation to get that specialist online and make the big play. But I, very critical of LU Navy setups. I mean, the only time we really saw them hit the flank hard was with four players, and the player that was watching the front was immediately dead. I believe that was uh, uh, it was uh, Shrays, maybe? I, I'm not 100% sure who actually who it was. But regardless, there was a four-man hit, and once you take care of the front and you get the information that there's a flank, it's Cincinnati's just easy rotates at B. Uh, big question marks for LU Navy on their gridlock approach on offense there. For sure, yeah. And whether it was Shrey cooking bad kids, I kill KDS, it's very unfortunate. And regardless, uh, again, in in those final moments shift, cooking bad kids was quite literally one frag away from getting that grab slam. And because of everybody on Cincinnati was so stacked together, it would have fined immediate value and they would have probably been able to turn that in their favor. Yeah. We'll never know in that alternate universe as we uh, load into Arsenal. Here we go, hard point. Mad dash for the middle. ARs will come into play here very dramatically in the very opening, you would assume yeah. at least, with ICRs coming in. But LU Navy, big pressure with the Sogs and Maddox as you see them just holding corners. Big fight win from Shrays. He's got one more here, and he's not going to expect it. A very interesting setup for Cincinnati as they play a little bit delayed, just looking for the contest, and then flooding from the window side with two players, only having to deal with two more essentially defenders here. Nice little shoulder peeks. That's a great concussion coming through. Or probably be cluster nade as Hildy will find one. Take up the Maddox for the other. Plus a little bit of a hit indicator with the cluster. And Unshocked will clean things up. Cincinnati with a little bit of an interesting setup. A little bit untraditional. And they will be the winners of this 50-50 point off the rip. Unshocked walking in. Then smack that right in the face, man. And good rotation and good answering back especially from that opening engagement Liberty Navy had that lockdown uh, right in the first hard point here in the helicopter area uh, we'll be rotating through here in about five seconds which is why you see all Liberty Navy not only taking their spawns but the rotating from the guns into the pit area uh, just trying to set up for this next hard point which is in the pit in fact and they're gonna be able to hold down this area momentarily but you know if King Ray and the entire team of Cincinnati find value in it just finding these entry frags they're gonna be able to walk back in here cleanly good lockdown though a good area for fred the shed there with the icr locking down everybody from range but yeah that's what able to clean up two up front and unshocked wow. in a very good spot will actually force liberty to spawn all the way out and all of a sudden numbers for cincinnati as they will flip this on their head what a smart play from unshocked he gets a little 1v1 not feeling the favor he will stay alive and make sure that the spawns are not in proximity to the hard point for liberty navy and cincinnati win the up front battles Really good discipline play for Cincinnati, and all of a sudden it looks like Unshocked is going to be that distracting player, essentially just being the flex and solo, uh, kind of minding his own business as he goes 
around the map, making sure nobody from Liberty Navy can feel secure. Vinny will get the information on where he is. We'll get some assistance, and LU Navy will at least be able to hold things off for the time being for the statue point, but not safe yet as Cincinnati has worked their way around the long back flank. This is a reprise of how Hardpoint worked out on Gridlock. It was uh, a little bit of a walkthrough for Cincinnati, and then it started getting pretty close until Liberty Navy started pulling incredibly ahead. And uh, it's it's 100% just because of I Kill KD's uh, popping off, cooking bad kids at that same point in time. It's not the reprise to that furthest degree, as you see I Kill KD's charging this war machine very slow. Not as slow as Hildy, but you know all of this is going to come down for cooking bad kids. He needs to continue to pop off and build this grab slam so that way they can continue the momentum uh, shift and rotating out with their their spawns and really locking down Cincinnati as they're trying to enter into these choke points. Uh, so now 10 seconds left here, as you can see, poking into the helicopter area. There's no way that they know they're each other's there. Good poke actually sees a little bit of the sprite. Yes, oh. coming down, gets the 1v2, does not get both. Really good hold for Liberty Navy, getting the scrap time, but more importantly, winning the rotation, not even having numbers here. Talk about Fred the Shed putting up a performance at the moment, 11 and six. And he's very, very close to having that initial vision pulse. Imagine a world where he's able to charge up two of those. God, maybe we'll speak it into existence because he's still performing with this ICR of all things, finding himself another two straight for Fred. Meanwhile, up front, cooking bad kids and Vinny not quite able to get the job done. And Fred's probably at this point wondering what else he has to do to keep his team in this because Cincinnati are bouncing back up close and personal. That is not the trophy system you want. Needed to put a little bit more oomph into that. Not quite the Stephen Curry range that you like to see with that little jump shot. It's but all the Fred's armor. It really locks alive. down your arms. <laughs> it's that big, you know, again, the, the night goggles. Again, yeah. that's why Recon always has those on. But yeah, <laughs> get out of here. 79 to 82, still in contest. Cincinnati still cleaning up on the point, though. The Maddox gameplay has been superior for the Bearcats. And they're looking like they are going to take this point in control, but also, again, win the rotation and set themselves up early for this lobby conference from Hill. And this is what you want from Unshocked and Hildy, again, with their Maddoxes in hand, uh, just rotating in here and just forcing these engagements, finding a lot of value at that. They, in these gunfights, shift, they... I would probably put the majority in their favor for Unshocked and Hildy, especially if they can catch multiple members of Liberty Navy off guard. Uh, even when they're swarmed on too, here you got King Ray again with their own Maddox coming in clutch, getting closer and closer to that Tempest. These specialists are going to come in very, very close here. 122 points now here for the hard point and 20 seconds left on this location alone. As Liberty Navy just struggling to find their way in here, they will get the trade-offs and they will be able to work their way in for this hard point. I mean, just take a look at Vinny again, the big SMG for LU Navy, only with four kills so far, just having a really tough time getting things going. You compare that to Unshock, the big SMG player for Cincinnati. He's 11 and seven. So again, I, I, I talk about this all the time when you compare teams. It really sometimes does come down to who wins the SMG battle. So far, Cincinnati is dominating that, and LU Navy just having a tough time finding the resiliency in these hills. Unshocked winning another mid-range gunfight will finally be taken down. And it, Fred, he's got the vision pulse. I think you hit this sooner rather than later just to help your SMG line feel a little bit more confident to get themselves going. Fred still fragging out 19 and nine. He needs to be slowed down. And now finally, Cincinnati finding a three burst of kills will set themselves up to get themselves established in the middle area for this second rotation and still convert on the points. I think if you're Fred, you need to hit this vision pulse sooner than later though. You could possibly charge a second. Yep, do the vision pulse, save your grab slam for later on in this round two. They also have the war machine too. You can't you can't stress enough, Vinny needs help. And the only way you can do that is by starting off with the vision pulse at least, or not letting them take these rotations alone because Vinny is very slow to building this Tempest. King Ray is about to have theirs. You take a look at this five pack of uh, specialists that Cincinnati is about to be working with, uh, not to mention how they have the lead as well. And as the uh, the new hard point ends up being controlled here for Liberty Navy, this could be a very easy takeover for Cincinnati because the specialists alone, they only really need to use Hildy's War Machine. And if it's anything like what we saw in Gridlock in that ramen shop, it's basically all you need for anything. Just comes down to is the flak jacket in the hand as you see a couple Correct. players for LU Navy do have it open. Vinny able to find himself to both those headshots. That's got to feel pretty wow. good, but not good enough as Cincinnati is able to respond with three. 
Again, specialists are charged. When do you pop these? Do you use them here for potentially to charge up and get this scrap time? Or do you just go... I mean, it looks like Ellie Navy wants to hit this one more time. So, I mean, why not use something here as uh, just force a decision to be made? Cincinnati doing what they can to hold on. Unshocked finding another one. He's up to 18 and 10. And again, just staying essentially at the same pace as Fred, but in different aspects. ICR on Sog, obviously the tempo a little bit different between those play styles, but look at you see King Ray is here and he's playing his life out. He's gonna get caught out just a little bit off guard. Fred able to convert for one. Now Fred, again, he's got an opportunity to possibly push for spawns, does get cut down by two players who are contesting. And again, if you're LG Navy, why not use something here? You need to hold this off. You don't have spawn yep. control. Hildy pulls out the war machine for two, looking for more. We'll only find the flat jacket on the third shot, but the Maddox will do well Ooh. against them with no problem. And UC will find the contest and likely the break since they have numbers. Yep, and here comes the War Machine now from I Kill KDs. I yeah, I totally agree, Shift. I think that their specialist usage is a little bit questionable here, but using it here just to lock themselves into this hard point is definitely where you want to be. 180 to 160. They are working this comeback. This is again a reprise of how hard point worked on Gridlock. P Hildy though, with the streaks yeah. coming back in 22 and 14. Yeah, I was about to say, again, that's what you give up by already having a monster lead for Cincinnati and you're just responding specialist for specialist. You're using it in reactionary fashion. Fred did use the Vision Pulse in combination with the War Machine, which is why you found a little bit of extra success. But again, that was a two for one essential trade as far as specialists go. The TAC-5 was also previously used by Yasbado, but it found, again, opportunity for Cincinnati to sustain themselves through, looking to break the 200 point. And it looks like they will do so as they're in vast control of this hard point in the weapons gunnery area so far. There it is, 200 broke, and Yasmino finding two. Then again, for Liberty Navy, where is your SOG pressure? Vinny's 13 and 20. Trey's 12 and 21. Oh, you, need you can't someone lose to that. step up. You can't, exactly. You cannot lose these isolated 1v1s like that. Cincinnati is just oh, putting themselves in such slam. a great spot. Wow, Unshot coming in clutch, uh, not necessarily clutch, just keeping the momentum in their favor. It's, it's my word of the day, uh, just to be a broken record for you all, too. Just the way that Cincinnati is able to keep the tempo in their favor and the momentum. Like you said, Shift, they're, the entire team of Liberty Navy, they're using their specialists in reactionary to how Cincinnati is playing, while Cincinnati is just using them as they, with, the, with their own free will, they don't necessarily feel the pressure to pull out, say, the Tempest or this next vision bolt that they already have from Marcaron is actually working on two streaks so far. Cincinnati, they are going to be able to walk away with this momentarily. And Mark will use the Vision Pulse, just needs to stay alive to make sure it gets full value. Unshock finding one, Mark up close. He's actually oh, found oh, himself oh, a song, will find himself a second. And this is all Cincinnati. LU Navy will be sent to the loser's bracket. For to funsies. Fight for their qualifier, just to make sure he gets a couple of teammates. <laughs> but even still, you see, I don't know where this team was in the midseason, but they're looking absolutely clean and polished between the 6-0 on the search, this nearly 125-point differential on the hard point, and then the big plays on the control. They're looking like a very complete team. Here are these plays from Fred. Again, you would have loved to have seen him just keep feeding the hot hand and just pop those specialists early. You need to reduce those differentials, I think, if you're LU Navy. Considering how the map was going, you know, it, maybe there were a couple of scrappy battles that were in there, kind of 50-50 fights. But generally speaking, the momentum was very vastly in favor of UC. I would have loved, like you mentioned, to see them use things a little bit earlier and just try to kill that momentum in their tracks and try to set themselves up for a potential tie game, draw scenario, whatever it happens to be or in the early part of the mid-game. But not able to come through is, again, just using things in reactionary fashion, I guess. You know, those uh, laws of physics do come into place that every uh, every force in motion has an equal and opposite reaction or whatever the phrase happens to be. You see able to still find themselves the momentum here with the 250 to 186. Yeah, the philosophy of specialist usage here with uh, with shift. It's uh, it's a very deep understanding and uh, going yes. into the scientific meaning behind <laughs> everything at that. that. So. Well. Uh, here we go. So uh, a couple situations at hand with Cincinnati winning. They will go into the playoffs as the second qualifier. They will be meeting up against Humber. But how about this? Loser's bracket situation. Liberty on Liberty action. A little Ooh. bit of a battle for Lynchburg, Virginia, as the both teams, Red and Navy, will be playing up against each other. One team will be playoff caliber. The other will be left to essentially play cheerleader for the opposite squad as... Uh, well, I don't know if uh, OMI would write a song about that kind of a cheerleader, but uh, regardless, uh, that will be the case that we'll be dealing with. So Cincinnati winning 3-1. I won't say in surprising fashion, but 
it, oh, I'm surprised. It was it was more convincing than I think that I would have expected, especially search and destroy. I mean, the the six zero emphatic statement on gridlock, especially where LU Navy have uh, historically have been playing really well. Uh, they're yeah. they're Katie's again. Uh, I'm not going to read off all the numbers for you, but they're definitely not bad. Uh, they were actually a lot better leading into this match than Cincinnati, but Cincinnati again with their macro play. Uh, just playing the terrain very well. Uh, it was a it was a come at me, bro, kind of type situation uh, all throughout gridlock. And then in that turnaround for uh, hardpoint on Arsenal, uh, which is a, a very composed play, uh, letting I kill KDs uh, just kind of just hang back along with Mark. But that very accurate on the AR and the Maddox, Sog, it, all these players just doing a fantastic job of catching LU Navy in these engagements. LU Navy getting a little shook, especially coming through that search and destroy was very uh, very unfortunate to see they couldn't keep their feet underneath them and, and couldn't even come out on those engagements. Uh, like I said, cooking bad kids in that 1v1 scenario, it was not just that one time shift that we saw it. Uh, is y You can't be losing those, especially when you have the first shot and you have the, uh, the pre-fire engagement in those 1v1s. Indeed, indeed. But again, that's our second qualifier in Cincinnati. We still have two more qualifiers to be determined. We already said LU Navy will be taking on LU Red, but in the bottom side for the fourth qualifier spot, Rutgers will be playing up against Oregon, who were able to take care of the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. The Volunteers not quite able to get things done here today. So that'll be where we head, I believe, next. We'll be going to a break. Yes, Rutgers versus Oregon will be next on our docket. You're not going to want to miss it. That's been Panda. I've been Shift. We'll join you guys for the next one just after this break. See you then.